वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ ब्रेकफास्ट ब्रॉडकास्ट वेलनेस मॉर्निंग टू एवरीबडी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट मिल्क दूध 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 आई एम वेरी एक्साइटेड टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट इट टुडे वी एक्चुअली ट्राइड टू यू नो मेक अ वीडियो ऑन दिस इवन लास्ट ईयर वन द लॉकडाउन बिगेन बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली कुड नॉट रिलीज इट बिकॉज ऑफ uh we didn't have because we didn't have the right tools the editing software and all of that so I'm very excited to be talking about that so let's dive in and unfold the mystery of milk <laughs> um okay so let's start with you shami like uh how was your relationship with milk when you were growing up because like coming from a punjabi family you know and milk is a big part of our, our diet so how was your relation did you like it did you not like it how was it so our, our house was also like using some like decent amount of dairy mm mm-hmm. and there wasn't much pressure on me for milk but i remember when i was a kid uh, like 5 years old you know i was in a school and my mom had arranged that i would be given bone vita and milk every day during the break and i was wow. getting that and uh, So only you were were getting that, not the other kids. Yeah, so the teacher, you know, there was somebody who was taking mm-hmm. care of me, and she would provide me with that. <laughs> and uh, and there would be curd and lassi, and you know, and then this butter, amul butter came, and then we were excited about it, and uh, bread and butter in the morning, and then or the cheese came, and then the cheese omelette, and cheese mm. in the maggi you created, and has a nice creamy flavor, wow. and. It was yeah something cheese cubes with metal mm. were coming in. Yes. It was easy, handy, available, you know, and it would lift the. Considered healthy. Considered healthy. Yeah. So, so that was there. I didn't think much much about it, and and I I saw there was a dairy near my house, hmm. where the guy used to like beat the buffaloes every day with sticks and badly, and you know, and uh, or tie the legs and. Oof. or put injections and you know and they would be they would resist and or when the calf is died you know they would uh, put it in a, the skin and then bring it there and uh, let the mother smell it and then so it gives the milk and then again you know so and all these things which were like which would really hurt me hmm. but uh, yeah there was no talk it was considered as normal to beat the buffaloes to get the milk and and he would abuse him them and use swear words at hmm. so Yeah, I mean, I've seen that, and now when I think of all the stories of milk, all that memories come to me. You know? mm, yeah. Yeah. So, and and how was your uh, story with milk? You know, what was your connection? Mm. I hated milk to the core. So, like, I hated it so much. It was so difficult for my uh, family to feed me milk. so i still remember i was drinking milk from a tumbler you know i had a this tiny pink tumbler and i was drinking milk from this tumbler up till the age of 13 hmm. you know and uh, and because yeah, i remember none of us my my cousins and all like nobody liked milk so much and there was a culture in our family because we would not have you know we would resist drinking milk in the morning so we would be given milk r- right before we are about to wake up you know mm. so when you are half sleepy and about to wake up and like they would you're drugged with milk exactly like so you know they would uh, somebody would come and they would be like cajoling us oh good morning we love you so much and all of that and then with that it, a glass <laughs> so of milk so you were bribed with love so that you can have yeah milk. exactly so i hated milk and um yeah i wasn't a big fan of cheese butter um the any of these things i used to like paneer and uh, uh raita so i could not have curd like curd so it used to be i you i would like it with like a lot of masalas and some yeah it should be ha huh, like uh, nicely beaten up so yeah, i used to like um raita a lot mm. like bundi raita and that's it so as soon as i left home for my college i stopped having milk you know and uh, yeah sometimes i would have it just with chocolate because i really like chocolate at that time but other than that i hated milk yeah and i was so happy to leave it when i went to college 
so yeah and when i uh, learned more about milk you know uh, that what it does to our body and not so much from an animal a cruelty point of view but uh, more from you know uh, what happens inside of, of our bodies when we consume milk and milk products then i was super convinced that okay yeah it, i've made the right choice <laughs> and uh, and that's what we're going to talk about it today so milk has two major components mm-hmm. one is sugar and protein so milk sugar called lactose needs an enzyme called lactase to in order to digest uh, and milk protein casein needs an enzyme called renin mm-hmm. and both these enzyme uh, lactase and renin disappear from human intestine at the age of 3 mm-hmm. so the body cannot digest milk after the age of 3 at all so is that the body is assuming that we will not be having milk after the age of 3 i mean day. yeah because in nature you're not supposed to and you're only supposed to have um, your mother's milk or a mother's milk mm-hmm. uh, till the age of 3 mm-hmm. uh, also this component casein so cow's milk has 300 times more casein than human milk mm-hmm. and and what exactly is casein you know so it is it is milk protein and it is needed to make big bones you know such as in cows um and surprisingly it's also the base for one of the strongest glues used by carpenters mm. like yeah i <laughs> just like a very hard thing yeah it's like yeah, what goes into maybe making the glue which is used you know by fevicol and other companies and all of that so it it is used to make glues mm. and like imagine like what it would do to our intestine uh let us see a video to understand this better as to what uh, happens inside of our stomach when uh <coughs> when the milk goes inside our stomach basically let's watch We're going to turn milk into a hard plastic nearly as strong as stone. First, we need one warm cup of milk. I went ahead and heated mine up in the microwave for 30 seconds and then measured off the correct amount. The second item we need is 1 tablespoon of white vinegar. Basically, for every cup of milk you use, add 1 tablespoon of vinegar and you can make a much larger batch. Once the vinegar is added, you'll need some mega serious stirring action. Go ahead, get angry at the milk and show it what for. Do this until little chunks start appearing. This stuff is called casein, and it makes up most of the proteins found in milk. When we extract it, we're actually able to use it to form our plastic-like substance. Now that we have a chunky glass of vinegar and milk, I'm going to strain the casein away from the liquids left in the glass. Shake it all out and try and drain away as much liquid as you possibly can. We want the curds to be very dry. What you're left with is a gooey and malleable substance that we can shape into any form we want before it dries. Take a couple paper towels, dump it on top, and drain it a bit more. You want to get this as dry as possible as I said before. Fold it over a few times and press down around the casein. Now it's time to mold. Keep in mind we can make this almost any shape we want. In this case, we made the substance into the shape of a rectangle just for testing purposes. If you want to form flat shapes, use cookie cutters to make them or even make your own mold. Did someone say milk sword? Once the casein was packed into the nice little brick, we let it dry for about 2 days. Now you're not necessarily going to need that much time. It's going to depend on how big your mold is. The final product was nearly unbreakable by hand and about as hard as a rock. In fact, the only way I was able to break it was with a hammer and a few well-placed swings. So it really comes to no surprise that back in the early 1900s this stuff was used to make pens, knife handles, even billiard balls. Of course we have plastic now, so it's not as popular these days. So yeah, did you get a hint that how uh, kidney stones and gallbladder stones are formed in our body? Like did you see in that video how hard that brick was? Like 
he could not even break it you know with uh, with his hands and this is what happens when uh, milk goes inside uh, our stomach also so when casein reacts with the hydrochloric acid a uh, lining of the stomach so thick curds are formed in the stomach and then it hampers digestion then the body has to spend a lot of energy to expel it you know causing to mucus formation which leads to various diseases such as cold cough uh, asthma sinusitis bronchitis kidney stones ulcers thyroid Thyroid so it issues. creates many complications. Exactly, like uh, a lot, uh, and it has been proved, you know, through various studies and a lot of experiments. So, if you just leave milk and milk products for two or three weeks, you know, you would see an immediate relief uh, mm. if you have any of these problems. And I can talk from my own experience. Mm. Like, I was able to heal PCOS. uh which was extremely complex and chronic if you have seen episode 1 and then i had sinusitis i had migraine i had like throughout my life i think up to the age of 25 i had constipation like mm. every morning i would have uh three or four glasses of warm water with honey or lemon and move my body a bit so like so a normal functioning through. body i mean exactly so and working. i could just get rid of all of these things uh, very quickly you know as soon as i just stopped having milk mm. products i mean i was off milk uh, from a very long mm. time all, but all dairy products yeah mm. yeah how was it for your asthma when you left Yeah, I mean, I left initially dairy for more ethical reasons, mm-hmm. but then uh, I had also read that milk is not natural food and things like that. And so, anything that is not meant for us, that is not our diet, is kind of a toxic overload mm-hmm. for us. I mean, that's what I believed in, and so that's why I stopped having milk. Yeah. And um, of course, with with gluten, I, when I would have, I would see immediate difference. but uh, i would definitely feel like heavy with uh, milk products you know hmm. and uh, yeah i mean i can't like show a clear difference in that sense but for last 10 years i have not had mi- milk and my asthma has also been like going is almost gone hmm. so there yeah, all those things which i was not finding as natural diet for us i was ruling out and and it made sense to me that this is not meant for us yeah and yeah exactly as you said so milk is a uh, species specific mm. you know so uh, cow's milk is for baby cows and human milk is for human babies you know mm. and and nature have designed it in such a way that a calf uh, doubles its its weight in 45 days mm. whereas a human baby doubles its weight in 180 days hmm. so we don't have to grow in size as as a cow as fast know, as fast as a cow but we have to grow our brain hmm. and for that we don't need uh, a substitute which has so much of protein hmm. so you this know? is more like a sometimes toxic overload when you are having more than what is required exactly so yeah so we human beings have a protein obsession you know like uh, like uh, have protein bar protein this protein drink whey protein you know so as if like uh, and also this whole way of looking at one input and just putting it like an injection and then it will grow whereas it's like a whole system you have to see yeah so as you said it's species specific so the rabbit needs to grow much faster so it's uh, milk has maybe 14% protein exactly so if you are if you are if people are like actually so obsessed with protein they should be having rabbit's milk because yeah. it uh, and why it has so much of protein because it doubles its weight weight in just 6 days yeah. so it has 14.4% protein so and i have also heard that a uh, lot of things that are happening like uh, the menstruation starting early and Exactly. you know pre- prematurely a body's growing hmm. is uh, also part of uh, having foods of course apart from chemicals uh, maybe milk also could be a it is contributor it, it in that it is a big contributor you know for all the hormonal imbalances yeah. happening and a lot of other things yeah and also for the milk they uh, cows are given other hormonal injections and antibiotics exactly. and uh, 
so that also grows in the body and creates uh, hormonal imbalances i yeah. think yeah. yeah um and mother's milk has this uh, substance called cholesterol mm-hmm. uh which provides immunity to babies from polio dysent- dysentery uh virus infections and so many other diseases so by giving baby cow's milk it gets protected um against cow diseases yeah. and leaving it defenseless against yeah. human diseases and and the other part is that the calf which needs this milk of the mother especially the first milk of which the has cow. of the cow which is a lot yeah. of cholesterol and with a lot of these uh, antibodies and things for the immunity yeah that is in fact again stolen from the cow and hmm. they make a, another sweet called chakka in maharashtra for ah. example and it's sold as a very soft uh, like a paneer dessert and which is again you taking away the first milk which mm-hmm. is actually oh a precious God. for the calf so that's also happening so that's what the greed human greed yeah i mean yeah. it's like having everything for us you know yeah. so yeah so when i understood that uh, you know that it's not natural because no other animal drinks milk after weaning and it's also species specific you know human beings are meant to have human milk and uh, i was having cow's milk or ca- uh, buffalo milk so you don't see any other species having milk of any other species yeah and that too it. after weaning you know you yeah. don't see a horse uh, having camel milk or you know yeah. or a dog having some other milk yeah. i mean and they are the uh, you're born uh, with your mother you know you have milk and you are done with it and finished you know yeah yeah you're not obsessed with it to bring the yeah. milk and collect the milk from all over places bring it in trucks and then make cheese and make sweets and tons and tons of ghee and tons and tons mm-hmm. of mawa and uh, and i mean we can definitely live without it and uh, so man so you're saying that you know human beings uh, cannot be an exception to nature's law yeah Uh paradoxically milk is a poor food like it has no fiber no iron no vitamin C and it is rich in saturated fat yeah which means saturated fats which is, is it like to do with cholesterol or something like yeah, that yeah and so that and it increases you know cholesterol mm. problem yeah but the story goes that uh, milk is connected to calcium and bones and how will you have strong bones and you know all the advertising is like make your kids strong grow faster So what what about that you know about teeth and they may just fall off you know if we don't have milk million dollar question you know uh so let me ask you this question and we ask our viewers this question so uh where do the cows get calcium from for their big bodies mm. <laughs> cows or even elephants and horses exactly. and giraffes exactly where do they get their calcium from are you saying that they get it from eating grass and plants you know exactly, there's calcium in that exactly exactly the plants there is ample of calcium in all leafy vegetable raw nuts dried fruits and uh, raw sesame seeds like they are extremely rich in calcium moreover milk calcium is tied with casein which we talked about earlier uh, which makes it really difficult to even digest this calcium and whatever little calcium is even there in the milk uh gets completely destroyed by pasteurization mm. you know so if you have fruits and vegetables every day and raw nuts occasionally you cannot you cannot have calcium deficiency even if you want to mm. you know like it's it's so potent in calcium mm. naturally and the calcium that the body can Digest. absorb yeah. easily like somebody said if calcium is such a big thing then uh, why don't we eat like uh, lime limestone you know or tuna uh, that also has calcium but the point is that what calcium is bioavailable for you and, exactly. and what i'm hearing is the plant based diet the calcium that is there in the plants body can absorb it with much exactly. more ease yeah. yeah and we also need to understand the role of calcium in our body you know like mm-hmm. why do we need calcium for like you know what is its function So one of the key function of calcium is to neutralize acid. Mm-hmm. You know, and this acid is produced uh by the use of white sugar, white salt, um uh, animal products, mm-hmm. alcohol, caffeine, tobacco, uh pesticides, uh meat, milk and milk products. 
so these are the foods which creates Create the more acid. acid in the body and then it needs to be neutralized with calcium so what the body does it uh, extracts calcium from our bones and teeth so leading to calcium deficiency it's like a loss actually you instead of gaining calcium you're losing calcium exactly. by having milk exactly milk and all it depletes these the calcium acidic foods are calcium leachers mm. so anybody who is on this highly high acidic food diet uh they are the one who's going to experience yeah. calcium deficiency more because the body is extracting calcium to yeah. digest these acids so if we stop having you know we at least reduce the intake of these uh, foods hmm. then much less calcium is needed for the body yeah. and also lack of exercise and sunshine also causes calcium deficiency i guess i guess we need to do another program on the idea of acid you know like yeah i think there should be another episode just on like acid and alkaline foods yeah. and you know mm-hmm. what is acid alkaline balance and things mm-hmm. like that you're yeah. right So yeah so you were also mentioning about pasteurization which is so common in the all the packets of milk that they come are pasteurized so how is that uh, a problem you know Oh that's a very good question you know pasteurization which uh, is basically heating milk at higher temperatures it really okay, sorry, destroys heating at high pressure both temperature and pressure you mm-hmm. know it uh, destroys milk completely take any food or uh, or plant and heat it hi- heat heat them at high temperatures you know what will happen and so enzyme which is the life principle of any uh, cell dies at 130 degree fahrenheit you know so if you take a slice of watermelon or plant or a handful of uh, sprouts and heat them at a higher temperature say 170 degree fahrenheit you know it will be completely dead and that's what happened in pasteurization mm. so um then like how it is advertised that pasteurization is done it's going to kill the bacteria whatever and it's mm. done for health pur- purposes it is not done for any health health purpose so the reason why pasteurization happens is because large quantity of milk uh, gets transported uh, to long distance mm-hmm. you know you, you would have seen like trucks of milk uh, traveling to long distance and in that uh spoilage happens you know and which leads to financial losses mm. so they are bound to protect their profits and not your health mm. you know and that's the reason so pasteurization is done. said that by going at high temperature and high pressure it like uh, it kind of uh, destroys the enzymes and the uh, milk is not yeah, digestible it, it, even it destroys less. whatever little um, food value that it has mm-hmm. uh, it just destroys that also completely mm-hmm. you know so if all the story is about milk that you are saying if that's true then uh, why why is it promoted so much and the government also like pushing it you know all hmm. this yeah this is a very important question you know mm-hmm. and so we have been raised on adverts you know and the high profile advertisement promoting milk remind me of a saying that if you say anything long enough mm-hmm. loud enough and persistently enough you know people will come to believe it without mm-hmm. questioning its soundness or basis and that's mostly true for milk you know so it's basically the profits and the money that is involved in the whole dairy industry you know and like big players all this totally yeah totally yeah and uh, it's also at the cost of our human health and uh, the animals that are you know under captivity and they suffer so much and the medication that is given and and in the end what we get is also something not which is healthy for us yeah which is actually poisonous for us which mm. is actually killing us mm. you know but how come like human beings have uh, got so much into cow's milk you know so you mean to say that why we chose cow's milk as a substitute for breast milk yeah buffalo milk horse milk, milk and camel <laughs> milk and you know of course goat milk is yeah, there yeah it is something to ponder upon because cow's milk is by no means nearest in composition to uh, breast Human milk, milk huh? you know uh, in fact donkey's milk is much more uh, similar in composition to breast milk um, and in 
people in different countries you know have used uh, uh, milk of various animals to feed their babies like camels horses mares reindeers uh, goats buffaloes yeah but the great move uh, and the great shift of uh, consuming cow's milk uh happened when uh, man started to rear herds of cows for agriculture hmm. you know so when humans settled and they started agriculture they needed like uh, you know bullocks for plowing exactly and uh, also then the cows became something that uh, also b- b- bring cow dung and manure yeah which is an so there were many reasons for having the cows and milk was one of the thing also which could be taken and that became one of the now a primary thing you know yeah so uh yeah exactly so they were using cows to basically make the soil more fertile yeah. you know uh, for agriculture when we say and sometimes when you know like they would not have food or something they would uh, and, and the relationship with the animals were also uh so sacred you know mm. unlike what we have now mm. and so they would ask the cow you know they would borrow that milk from like ask the cow and take that milk for their babies uh <clears throat> and then it became into turned it into greed and it thought it could be a more industry you know it could yeah, be they could they industry. became just a statistics you know so many cows so many liters you know yeah yeah so there seem to be many other reasons for having cows in the ecosystem and uh, as far as i met some people who are from the village background they say that earlier uh, even like selling milk was sacrilege you know like you could uh, get milk from anybody Hmm. because people were having milk for their own consumption and uh, and the cow dung and you know the all that uh, the hmm. farm yard manure hmm. fim that is called hmm. every house had a fim like a farm yard manure where they could throw or in india it's called rodi where uh, they throw all the cow dung hmm. so whenever they need uh, you know uh, manure they would just take it from there hmm. so everybody had their own system of you know so the whole ecosystem was there yeah so yeah. it was considered bad if you were selling it Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. because cow had a whole role in the exactly. ecosystem and not yeah. just a something a machine to be extracting from exactly. it, you know, and giving oxytocin injections and all. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't a commodity. Yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, cows could also move freely, you know. There were uh, common grazing grounds there. So it is yeah. not that the cow was tied on a 3 feet rope the whole day. Yeah. you know yeah so that's also something to think of yeah and also cows are more docile you know and they're easily herded animals they produce large volume of milk for a given volume of grass and they have four teats to extract milk from so it, you know so all of these things make it easier to uh use cow for mm. our milk consumption rather than any other animal yeah but the way we have been brought up you know like milk has been such an integral part and uh, and is like on a pedestal so of course i i left milk around 10 12 years ago but i imagine it's very difficult for people to uh, leave uh, milk because they were say what about my morning tea or what about my coffee and what about the cheese you know yeah and they have a memory to yes. it you know yeah the dahi paratha and yeah. you know, all those things yeah our uh, and they have and also have or, it, a, or also know? this this uh, very uh, very filmy thing ki you know ki shaadi ke baad uh, oh, that dood 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 ka glass leke jana and i think it also dood as an aphrodisiac also i think and yeah. mixing all those things and then dood also has another function of you know bhang mein lassi you know so exactly. bhang ka dood or yeah. so milk is uh, everywhere so everywhere. how can people live without it you know poor guys <laughs> yeah. so yeah i mean there are various substitutes you know like nut milk you know so coconut milk almond milk and cashew milk peanut milk are great uh substitute not substitute i mean they're so rich in so many things so they are and they can easily substitute for your chai for your coffee or peanut curd or curd yeah and the and the famous doodh ka gilas aur raat ko lege jaane ka even that can be like a nut milk can yeah, be yeah so all these you know and and the and sometimes people have an idea that oh these are so expensive and all of that mm. of course they're expensive if you buy it you know but if you make it it's damn cheap mm. and um, yeah uh, yeah a big no to the packaged uh, almond milk and all of that because just read the label you know yeah. what all it read does it read only almond milk 
Yeah. Like I was surprised to read some of the labels which read that uh, there was just 10% percent almond and seventy mm. percent water. Yeah. Okay. Or so, gavar gum or all kinds of things are there. Yeah, in and emulsifiers and artificial um, uh, preservatives and all of all of the things, sugar and various other so, things. So, so basically, we can as just thing. as we make it, you know. I mean, sometimes we can show it to people how to make yeah. uh, these nut exactly. milks. Exactly. You know. Yeah. And a big no to soy milk, of course. Yeah. You know. So in fact, we have a film coming out which we would be releasing very soon. So that would. Um, Talk about yeah, soya unfold and the mystery of soy. Yeah. Basically, so no soy milk at all. Uh, and I have some resources for you, you know, for you to research and learn more about. Uh, so there are two films which I would highly recommend that you watch. One is What the Health, which um, What the Health, what not the What the Hell. No, What okay. the Health. Uh -huh. Yeah, which uh, actually talks about. Um, a lot of things and you know one of the reason that milk is one of the primary reason for breast cancer as well mm -hmm. milk and milk products and this film talks about it so and how the medical industry and the governments really promote it and all the anti-cancer organizations even promote uh, it so do watch that and another is game changer mm -hmm. which is actually a game changer for a uh, lot of people and especially for people who think that you know where will i get my protein from and the fitness have industry my, and you know um, muscles and all of that so it's a great film to watch and it shows it has uh, interviewed and covered a lot of athletes and uh, film actors you know who have uh, whatever so called amazing physique and they are off daily you know so these are the two films and another uh, great resource is this Milk, a Silent Killer, by Dr. N. K. Sharma, and um, yeah, I was surprised when I picked up this book that this was first published in 1987. Mm. Like I was not even born then, mm. <laughs> and it has been there since then, and yet so uh, like so like so li like people don't know much about it, you know? Yeah, it uh, so a lot of knowledge is around. But uh, we are used to certain things, and there's a comfort level, so we don't question it. So we would really want, uh, you know, people to question what they are doing, what is the food that they are eating, yeah. whether it's the water that they are consuming, yeah. what is happening to the chlorine, and you know, how yeah. much chemicals are coming, and uh, uh, and you know, what is the impact of milk? Is it natural? Is it normal? So yeah, we have to really start questioning it, and you know, just because we are, um, th we are in this. Yeah, we are so influenced by advertisements and and as i said you know something which is anything which is said long enough loud enough and persistently now we tend to believe it yeah. you know so uh, the onus is really on us you yeah. know to really question and like really connect with our body and see how yeah. how do you feel so yeah i would highly uh, you know encourage all of you to maybe to not go off milk you know just for a week for two or three weeks ideally you know and see a huge difference in your body in your breathing in your energy levels if you have any pains like i used to have severe joint so pains. experience it and see yeah, give it a give it a shot exactly. all your life you lived with milk exactly. you won't die if you don't have it for two weeks you know truly so just give it a try and see it for yourself and you have all these resources that i shared to um uh, to learn more yeah. And yeah, and if you have any questions, do leave us in the comments and we would love to answer that. Or any insights that you discovered for yourself while watching this, please share that exactly. also. Exactly, yes. So, thank you so much for uh, being with us and see you in our next episode. Thank Yay. you. Thank bye you. Bye. bye. bye.